shootings. Another issue discussed by the Commission on Arctic Tracks is death penalty. Several countries, mostly in Asia, are still applying the death penalty for drug offences. Other countries oppose this. There's currently 10 people awaiting execution in Indonesia. We cannot have death penalty for drug offences. It's, um, it's against international law. It's uh, not an effective deterrent for drug crimes, and it's not the solution. As an Indonesian, I think it's very shameful for our government. They use the number that from the study seven years old to justify that Indonesia now in the, the drug emergency situation, and and our president just declared war on drugs. And when we analyze the the statistic that they always use, it's the methodology is, methodology is very weak, so uh, we push our government to get, develop uh, evidence base before they make, this is a huge decision, this is about life and death for someone. Indonesia has ignored all diplomatic efforts to save the citizens of other countries that it, it has um, executed. Uh, a Brazilian person a couple of weeks ago, uh, a Dutch national. There's another Brazilian awaiting execution now, two Australians, and the Indonesians are showing no interest in any form of diplomatic discussion about it. The interesting thing there is we're in a diplomatic forum here. So how do these governments talk to each other when the Indonesians have outright ignored the heads of state of those other governments on a very important issue? The board urges all countries that continue to retain the death penalty for drug-related offences to consider abolishing capital punishment for this category of offences. The EU is opposed to the use of measures of any kind that are not respectful of the human being. In this regard, we oppose the death penalty in all cases and without exception, including for drug-related offences. And we are consistently calling for its universal Abolition. An interesting thing about those Indonesian executions is that they're held in a supermax prison on an island. Now when you go into that prison, and this I have from reliable sources from uh, a team that visited there in 2007-8, there's a plaque on the way in that explains that the prison was paid for by the European Union and the US. And it's just one of those windows into how a conflation of the war on terror and the war on drugs, but also ongoing enforcement assistance. Uh, for drug enforcement, including through the UN, that with no human rights accountability for it. Our research suggests that in practice, European states are actively enabling death sentences and executions in countries like Iran and Pakistan, which aggressively pursue the death penalty for drug offences. In one example, two border posts were set up in Iran in the regions of Zahadan and Dogarun, um, and in the first two years of those border posts operation, a number of drug traffickers were arrested and subsequently uh, sentenced to death and executed, including a number of children. And, and, you know, we know the names of those children. And these are programs, these are border offices that, that Europe has funded and set up. Just to give you a sense of who the biggest funders are, hopefully this gives some kind of representation. You will see that the biggest orange circle on that map is the UK. The UK is giving nearly $30 million to these kinds of programs. But there are very few major European states who haven't been involved in some way in this. So Italy, France, Germany, all of these countries do support these, these types of operations. We ask um, the EU governments that are against the death penalty to make sure that the money that they are sending over or any aid um, or any other trade relationships, that they're not supporting programs that lead to the death penalty because in principle they are against this um, you know the money sh they should put their money where they say they're